For tonight's dinner, we are having sirloin tips. So what you see here are two really large sirloin steaks. I have just cubed them into the sizes that I wanted for the sirloin tip meal. Now, if you've been around here for long, you know that we um, get our own beef butchered, and that is the beef we eat. Our son Gunner just lives down the road from us a little ways, and any cows that we have stay on his property and he takes great care of them and then we once they get butchered we share the meat so i'm always it seems like when uh, we have beef in the freezer i'm looking for ways to use beef because we have plenty of it so sirloin tips that's what we're having tonight. So I have cubed this, like I said, and then I'm gonna use this seasoning here. It's from the Pit Boss, and it's just called Chop House Steak. And so it's like an all-purpose seasoning that you can use on anything. Look how good that looks. All right, you can see here that I have liberally coated this meat and I'm just gonna leave it sit here on the counter so it can start coming to room temperature. And I'm actually just gonna pan fry this in my large cast iron skillet, and I'll probably do it by batches, maybe half and half, or maybe a third um, at a time. I want it to get a crust on it, but not to be well done inside, so maybe about medium. And I'm gonna show you the rest of the dinner as we come along using Beef Tonight Sirloin Tip Steak for sirloin tips dinner. So it's gonna be delicious. Just stay tuned to see what else we do with this. I've also got some onions in the pan frying here, just low and slow so they can get really tender, get a good caramelization on them. I'm gonna fry up some mushrooms as well. And then I've got some little mini potatoes boiling here and I'm gonna show you in a minute what we're gonna do with those. Looking perfect. We've got a little crust on the outside there. I'm just going to remove those and continue to batch fry those. Out of the boiling water are my potatoes. These are fork tender and I am going to make a new dish for us at least um, using these little mini potatoes and a flat bottom glass and just once those are pulled we're going to just give them a smash. So we're going to smash those down, all of them, and then we are going to put some toppings on these to make them oh so delicious. my potatoes are all smashed I'm now taking this garlic salt and I'm adding it to my melted butter this was about a half a stick of melted butter and I just sprinkled in enough garlic salt didn't measure it just kind of eyeballed it and I'm gonna use my brush here and get all of these potatoes very very generously coated with the garlic butter Now I'm 
gonna sprinkle this with the Parmesan Romano cheese and then I'm gonna go in with some shredded cheese. Any type of cheese topping that you prefer would work wonderful. And now I am sticking these in the oven under the broiler just long enough to melt the cheese. Served my sirloin tips back in my deep iron skillet that I fried it all in. And right before I served, I just put a little drizzle of A1 steak sauce. It really gives it a flavor similar to what we have when we're at the state fair with the uh, ribeye bowls. Here are my caramelized onions and my mushrooms that I fried up. And then I just served some buttered corn with a little bit of garlic salt in that as an additional side. This meal was over the top delicious. We enjoyed it so, so much. We were celebrating our youngest son and his wife's third anniversary and this meal was a showstopper. I encourage you to give this one a try. Now on to the second meal using beef, this time ground beef loaded nachos. Are these not beautiful? And let me just tell you, they taste even better than they look. I'm starting off here with just a can of refried beans and the secret to this, at least according to my taste and my daughter-in-law gave me this tip, use a little bit of bacon grease in your refried beans and that gives them an amazing flavor. Don't ever throw out bacon grease, by the way. Here I am using a can of just a store brand of Rotel, so tomatoes with the peppers, and I've just chunked up some Velveeta cheese, again, using just the store brand, I think the Aldi brand, and I'm just stirring that together after it's come out of the microwave. You just wanna microwave it for three or four minutes, stir it, and make sure everything is melting down. I don't measure this. I put in as much cheese as I think I need and use a can of the Rotel. Here are my delicious refried beans. Just stirring those together. They were so smooth and flavorful. You can do all kinds of things to doctor up beans, but that's what I've been doing lately, thanks to my daughter-in-law's tip with the bacon grease. So here we go, look at this. Just top this with all the things that you love on loaded nachos. We use refried beans, ground beef. I fried that up and seasoned that after it was drained, which is some cumin and some chili powder. We've got some red onion, some salsa, some shaved lettuce, sour cream, and squeezed lime juice on top for a delicious meal. About every weekend when I was a teenager, loaded nachos would be on the menu at some point because we love them so much. Always a favorite. And a tried and true favorite anytime you're talking about beef has got to be a delicious steak. My husband's favorite cut is a ribeye and that's what these two are here. I'm gonna show you the way that we prefer them and then I'm also gonna show you a delicious potato salad to go alongside. All right, and while those steaks are just sitting on the counter coming to room temperature, which I can tell you more about in a second, I have boiled up the last of this bag of these little mini potatoes that I have. Once those are boiled to fork tenderness, I have drained off the water and I'm just going in with my little food chopper there or my little meat chopper rather. This is the one by Pampered Chef. I love it. It obviously is very multifunctional. And so I am just using that to kind of smash down my potatoes a little bit. They have the skins left on as you can see. And so once those potatoes are smashed down, I'm gonna start adding in the ingredients to make this potato salad. I don't follow a set recipe for potato salad. I just use what I have and kind of what I'm in the mood for at the moment. Sometimes I want a little bit more of a mustard base. Sometimes I don't. So I just kind of do it as I go. What I'm doing this time, I'm using a little bit of Duke's mayonnaise and a little bit of Miracle Whip. Kind of a bottom of the jar recipe going on here because I finished off that jar of Duke's and I finished off a jar of Miracle Whip, and so I'm going in with a fresh jar there uh, to add a little bit more, and then just a squeeze of mustard. That was sounding good on this day. 
Now to my potato salad, I have some diced red onion, diced red pepper, some celery, and a couple of eggs. And that is going to be added all in. Like I said, I do this different almost every single time. But it is never without onions, never without eggs. Those things are never left out. But I usually never add pepper in, but this time I had a red pepper and I thought, okay, I'm throwing that in. And same with the celery. I had the celery, so I just tossed it all in and now we're going to continue to give this a good stir. a potato salad or honestly anything it's good to just give it a taste see where you are on seasonings see what it needs maybe uh, hopefully something that you can add in it's not too great if it's something that you have already too much of and you need to take out but just kind of taste as you go and then see what needs to happen to make it oh so delicious so we have some garlic salt in there and some black pepper and you know, another thing I almost never leave out of my potato salad is some sort of pickle, always a sour pickle, not a sweet pickle. So I like a dill pickle or something like that. Nope, didn't put that in this time, didn't even think of it. But you know what? We didn't miss it. This was really, really a delicious potato salad. James said several times how much he enjoyed it. It was a great addition to go along with our steak. finishing touch I just sprinkled on some paprika just to top it all off and look pretty now let's get into talking about these ribeye steaks James did trim off just a bit more of the fat the butcher that we used this time left a little bit more than we usually like so he trimmed that off and then we just have some of that chop house seasoning Normally, James just does salt and pepper, but we are using that bottle that we have. So he sprinkled it liberally on both sides with the chop house seasoning and some pepper. And then we just like to bring those to room temperature before we put them on the grill. Here is our big Pit Boss grill combo uh, smoker that we have here. And here are those steaks on the grill. They are really, really a thick, big steak. And he is just, I, I'm not the griller. James is the griller. And so he masterfully takes care of the steak or chicken, whatever we have. And like I said, James especially loves a ribeye. I'm pretty sure he could have beef with every meal. Here is my steak. I forgot to film. I dived right in. I had my potato salad on the side. It was a wonderful summer meal. Look at how yummy this is. This is a brownie trifle, you guys. And before we end this video, I thought I would show you this yummy recipe that I made right around Easter time for my family. So let's just jump on into that before we wrap this thing up. And for dessert tonight, I just put together this really quick brownie trifle in one of my favorite bowls. I don't have a trifle bowl that's footed, you know, and clear that you can see through it. But that's okay, this is for, um, this is the week of before Easter. And so this has such a fun springy look to this dish. So I used it, I went to the store today thinking I was just gonna buy a pre-made dessert and just take a cheater route because I had a busy day. But I wanted dessert tonight for a family night and there was really nothing, they had nothing that I really wanted. So the Betty Crocker, um, the Betty Crocker brownie mixes were 50 cents a box. So I thought, okay, that's about the simplest dessert that I can make. So I bought a box of brownies, a brownie mix, made it according to the box directions, let it cool and I crumbled it. And then in this, I layered a layer of brownie crumbles, a layer of chocolate pudding, just a box pudding that I made, pudding mix and milk. I layered that next and then I put um, whip top and Cool Whip. Um, on top of that and then I layered that twice so brownie chocolate pudding cool whip and then on the top like I said it's the week before Easter here and so I wanted something fun so I, I tell you almost everything was picked over so I just grabbed these jelly beans that look like little speckled eggs and put those on top and it is just the most fun my little grandsons are gonna think this is great and all of us are gonna think it's delicious. So I couldn't take a shortcut and buy something already made, but this was so quick and easy. 
and I had to show it to you. As always, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. I hope you got some great ideas, three ways to use beef, and I hope everyone's doing well. If you have not subscribed to my channel, hit that red subscribe button. I would love to have you look down below for any links or recipes, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.